To my left, the challenger, weighing in at 261 pounds, from Kansas City, Missouri, Hacksaw Butch Reed! To my right, in the blue corner, the current NWA heavyweight champion weighing in at 243 pounds from Charlotte, North Carolina, Nature Boy Rick Flair! Rick Flair, world's heavyweight champion recognized by the largest of the governing bodies in the professional wrestling game. Recognized by Mid-South as the world's heavyweight champion and certainly recognized by Ric Flair as the world's heavyweight champion. Here is a man who lives every moment of his life training, preparing, wrestling. He is a man who is dedicated to being the champion of the world. Tonight, he faces a tough opponent. He faces a real test of his ability to hang on to it. And Flair is a man who takes his time out in that ring, can move with amazing uh, suddenness, but who is very, very proud of the fact that he can handle people in wrestling as well as in the rough and rugged side of the game. But so can Hacksaw Butch Reed. So, Ric Flair, nature boy, yes. Colorful, you bet. Tough, well, let's ask Butch Reed when this match is over, whether he thinks the champion is tough, win, lose, or draw, Butch Reed will know it better than any man in this building. So Reed, who has proven his ability in rings all over the Mid-South area, and he has proven his ability in Houston, right here in this Coliseum, right here in this ring. And right now, as he pushes the champion away, he is about to make an effort to prove it again. Butch Reed, 275 pounds and muscle. And you've heard us mention many times that Butch Reed can handle 500 pounds in the, in the bench press. And Butch Reed can do a lot of things, but one thing is on his mind right now, no matter what else he has accomplished or what he can accomplish, winning this title here tonight is focus of all of his attention. One way to stay champion is not to be afraid to take the easy way out when it comes to breaking a hole. You get a foot outside the ropes, get tangled up in the ropes, get against the ropes, anything that makes the referee break the hold instead of having to break it yourself. So if you're writing a book on how to remain champion, that's one of the prerequisites. And if you're wondering how to win the title, Butch Reed just gave you a lesson in how to tear a fella's head off. And that works too. It's a good way to give him a cauliflower ear. So referee Tommy Gilbert down watching closely, looking at the champion's shoulder. The champion tilts him back takes the leg, takes the waist lock, and manages to handle the 275 pounds of the challenger and tilt him back close to the canvas. So you get enough of his, his weight, that is Flair's weight, and as well as the weight of Hacksaw Butch Reed, then he can stand him on his shoulders and leave him there. The twist, side headlock, get the forearm, the bone of the forearm up against the bone of the head or the bone of the 
eye or jaw or against the ear. And then you're going to have an effective side headlock. And right now, the power and strength of Butch Reed made itself evident as he managed to keep the champion from breaking the hold and actually wa was able to get his hold back immediately and even as effective as it was before. So the side headlock is Reed's answer. This match here tonight is the climax of a card that has seen some wild and violent action. This, the greatest prize in the professional wrestling game, the NWA heavyweight belt, is the match that takes a different course. It, uh, the challenger knows that he's gonna have to wear the champion down and the champion knows that he's going, to, oh, he's, well, he's, I was gonna say, he has to be careful. He just riled Butch Reed and you don't rile Butch Reed without paying for it. And listen to the crowd, they want the referee to take a long, long walk in just one direction out of the ring. So he's getting a lecture and how to open his fists, how to step in there politely, and Reed is not going to listen. He's being told, but he wants to get at champion Ric Flair in a positive manner. Well, Reed is presenting his case, but at the five minute mark, He's gonna settle back down to some wrestling and R Ric Flair has accomplished at least one of his aims and that is to destroy the composure of, of Butch Reed. And here comes the champion again, same way, same style. And he's got, the, he's got the referee doing his wrestling for him. And Reed now with that fist cocked and ready to throw is turning his wrath against the referee as well as Ric Flair. So that just shows the psychology of the champion. When he finds a man that's big and tough and strong, then you've got to upset that man's battle plan. Make him mad, throw him off balance. Shoulder butt, hard driving shoulder. And Rick Flair is thrown by the very hold he thought he was going to use. And there, look at this power and strength of Butch Reed. He heisted him up, he pressed him up in the air. 240 pounds of world's heavyweight champion and he had him towering about seven feet over the, over the canvas before he slammed him down. No matter what kind of shape you're in, a fall of that kind is going to destroy the, the ability to get all those muscles to work together. Rack up your coordination. So the referee is Bearing down on Butch Reed, and the referee is getting the attention of the crowd right now. So Reed has also accomplished something. He has made things a little bit tough for the champion, and he has maybe given the champion something to think about. But Flair is a veteran wrestler, and so is Butch Reed. Here, there's the bear hug that is shortened up as he reaches up toward his wrist, and then that starts to slide back as the champion maneuvers, but the pressure remains constant. You make it difficult for a man to breathe. You sort of hyperventilate him if you can get a shoulder in there right in the solar plexus keep the pressure on and make it tough for him. 
There is Butch Reed now with a driving, driving wallop. So Flair's in trouble. Reed's on top. There's the foot over the rope. You can see again that the champion learned that first lesson I was mentioning. Get, get into the ropes and let the referee break the hold instead of fighting out, using up your strength. That's slashing, driving chop. Here's Butch, Butch Reed caught in a twisting arm lock. I have watched Ric Flair defend his title in a number of places, faraway places, in New Zealand, in Singapore, and he is a man who has not been afraid to go to the areas of the world where people love wrestling but don't get too much of it, and he has proven himself to be a champion. But right now, he's got to prove it all over again. He's got to prove it every time he steps into the ring. And right now, he may not have proven it. He may have proven that Butch Reed is a challenger, and a good one. So Reed tries to set him up, and he's got him with a bear hug. A big, hard squeeze and the breathing becomes difficult. You get enough of that and you start seeing spots in front of your eyes. It's something that works. And when you get out of it, you have trouble catching up on your breathing. So Reed stays in close. 10 minutes have gone by. 10 minutes have gone by in this match. And Ric Flair, watch that arm. You see that arm maneuver and drop. It is sometimes an indication that the big squeeze has acted as a sleep hold, that it has furnished the brain with too little oxygen. And as Reed now puts him down, there's one, there's two, and Reed got a shoulder, uh, uh, rather Reed got pushed up and a shoulder came up. He's trying to glue those shoulders down to the down to the deck and underneath Ric Flair is confident now that he has broken the bear hug, the big squeeze around his waist, and he is able to breathe a lot better. There you can see that, that he has accomplished that purpose. He made sure that arm was in there where he could move and shift. Championship thinking. And as Reed puts the big grip on him. You can bet that his forearms feel like he had lost all the life in them. You put the big squeeze on long enough and your hands become tired. That's why you can, the longer you hold a hold like this, the less effective you become in administering it. The, the man who's caught, if he can outlast you, has a fighting chance because your arms get a little bit weaker. That's why you've got to spend those hours in the gym. That's why you've got to be lifting those weights. That's why you've got to be doing the exercises for the hands, the wrists, the forearms, because that's what you use in applying a whole like, oh! You could hear that one all over the building. And he gets in there with another driving, slashing chop. But hitting with the with the fist was Butch Reed. There's one, and there's two. But the champion underneath was able to form a wedge and slide out. And he stayed right in that position to tempt, to tempt the challenger to drop on him, and then rolled out from underneath. So that gave Reed a bump he wasn't expecting. So. Ric Flair starts to fight his way up, and he's getting caught in the backslide. Here it is, there's one, there's two, and there, whoa, man, how he barely squoze out of the way that time, whoo. So, so Reed is lifted and dropped, and there's a leg breaker as Ric Flair dropped the knee of Butch Reed right down on his outstretched and bent leg. 
and this is a bad way. All of the 270 pounds of Butch Reed came down crashing hard, and that's why we call it a leg breaker. It is and does have the ability to break a man's leg. And watch out for Ric Flair. He's a master at leg work. He ties legs up in the figure four leg lock. Here he is, spinning around, spinning toe hold. Now he's getting it into position. Now as he manages to get that lock on there, Butch Reed is in the most serious trouble he's been in in this match. And the fans are screaming for Butch uh, Reed. But Butch Reed is having his problems. He may hear them, but there's not much he can do about it. He may now have to choose between having two legs that work well or having the wor another chance at the world's heavyweight title or at least coming out of that ring and saying, I wasn't beaten, I didn't give up. And he's fighting to preserve his legs, to preserve his shot at the title and there is Ric Flair applying the pressure, but Butch Reed is turning him over. Butch Reed is turning him over slowly. He's going to nullify the effects of the hold. He's going to have a chance to reverse, to reverse the hold. And as the champion is turned, Butch Reed gets into position with those powerful legs of his, which have withstood the force of champion Ric Flair and Actually, Flair broke that hold himself in order to in order to get a chance to get his own legs working again. Here you see him after the same hold. He's going to spin it around. 15 minutes have gone by. There's the twist. He tries to keep from being kicked. And there's a, a roll up into a small package. Oh, man. He grabbed that leg and hung on to it. Now as, as Flair steps in, limping while he does it, you gotta remember that that hold is tough on his legs too, and most certainly when Butch Reed was able to reverse the pressure, when he was able to reverse the pressure, he, he was able to hurt Ric Flair's leg. Out on the floor, Butch Reed, through the ropes and down on the deck. Referee, Getting ready, now counting as he pushed the champion back to a neutral corner and Reed went, or rather, Flair went to the corner and then decided that he could get out of it and walk away and Reed's having trouble. He stands up. Some of those old football injuries come out when you get those toe holes and holes that affect the knee put on you and he had it put on him. There was no question about that. Now. You see that slashing blow. That's been one of Ric Flair's favorites. He says he does that because he, he'd rather do that than hit a man, which he can, calls illegal. But he, he, he claims that this helps to keep his hands from breaking. So Butch Reed is outside, and Butch Reed is pacing up and down. Butch Reed is getting a full head of steam for coming back in, and he's going for the sunset flip he went for it but he didn't get it there is what I was talking about before he hit him and th there's one there's two Flair hit him with his fist and had no effect and it hurt his hand so Flair goes after him tries to set him up now no it's a quick switch and the hold is the sleep hold as the big powerful arms of of Butch Reed wrap around the head and the neck of world's champion Ric Flair and the effort to put him to sleep pours down on, on Flair, just bears down hard. The 275 pounds lean into him. The grip is around the head. The carotid artery is the target. He's trying to uh, impede the progress of blood to the brain. There's one and there is two and there is two that went down with some control so the referee didn't do anything about it there's one there's two and now flair tries to fight his way over to his side and ultimately to it on his stomach there he is flat on his back there's one again when he hears that 
sound when he feels that shudder of the of the mat as the referee hits that canvas hard and a referee should hit the canvas hard because that sometimes transmits to the oh Rick Flair brought his knees up to the bent position as Reed went through the air and Reed fell on those knees and hit and hit hard. So now as the champion gets into a defensive position, the count stops on him, but it was going on on Reed. But Reed uh, demonstrated the fact that he has something in him to get up. Here is Flair now trying to keep damaging the same area. So Butch Reed catches another slashing chop. And as Flair moves in, there's the side headlock, and he goes for that uh, more in a desperation move. He was trying to get uh, that hold to take Butch Reed down and to do something about uh, just thinking for a moment and getting some breath. Beautiful bridge. And now he goes for the backslide. Slides him down. There's one, there's two. And the champion got away before the count of three. Butch Reed come up there and showed the power in his back and in his legs and in his neck as he bridged and come up to a standing position and then into that uh, backslide. Now Reed throwing that fist and throwing it hard, finding Ric Flair, driving it into him. And as as Reed finds the jaw of the champion, he's trying to set him up. 20 minutes have gone by, and there goes the referee knocked outside the ring. He was spun around, and in the whirling around, referee Tommy Gilbert was in the way and was knocked through the ropes and off onto the concrete. Here is the champion grabbed with the cradle hold and put down on that canvas, but not that time for, for the count. And here is... Butch Reed going over the top rope, hanging on and coming right back in and going after Ric Flair. And as the effort develops, he, he gets him across there and drives out with a spearing move to try to catch the champion with, a, with his head right squarely in the chin if he can. But uh, he hit him, but not in the knockout area. Oh, again, that driving chop. Here comes the champion climbing the rope. You see him ready to jump off, and he caught him. No referee in the ring. No referee at all. And here goes Butch Reed as he spins around with the same hold that the champion used on him. He's got both legs locked up in a, in a leg breaker. The referee is is calling for the bell. The referee is calling for the bell and Butch Reed has the, has the hold and referee, I'm, I'm trying to, the only thing I can figure is that it was Butch Reed who hit, Butch Reed who hit the referee as he went through the air and it was Butch Reed who knocked him out of the ring and it may be a disqualification. It may, because Ric Flair. The, but Ric Flair has been disqualified. The champion has been disqualified but the belt does not change hands on a disqualification. So he called for a disqualification, but not as I uh, estimated, but he actually gives the match to, to Butch Reed. He gives the match to Butch Reed, but Butch Reed finds that it's an empty victory. He has, he has won, the, won the match, but he has... He, he has won the match, but he has not won the title, and that, of course, is the uh, 
Uh, we are surrounded by fans here, screaming, hollering, and all hollering that Butch Reed has won the match. And the, uh, the referee has made his decision, and that is the climax of a great effort by Butch Reed to win the world's heavyweight title.